Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, General Hyten, in your prepared remarks, you said the only way to change our strategic deterrent is to convince our adversaries to reduce the threat. And this is not occurring. China and Russia in particular are not only modernizing the traditional elements of their own triads, but they're also building a myriad of additional nuclear capabilities to threaten the United States. In your comments to Chairman Inhofe, you explained the uh, desperate need that we have for modernization and to continue uh, with our triad, the importance that has for our national security and for the security of this world. Uh, I would ask you, are you aware of any intelligence or threat assessment supporting uh, the courses of action that are called for from some that we need to unilaterally cut our nuclear forces? I'm not. Is it your view that taking uh, such actions would make us more vulnerable and reduce our ability to deter threats? It would significantly reduce our deterrent. Uh, we're looking at a budget in the Department for Nuclear Forces and uh, the plan for modernization. Some people consider it a wish list um, just to give the department everything that they desire. And no effort's been made to sort through things to look at what we truly need to address uh, the threats that we have. And I'm talking about need versus want here. Um, that's not an accurate statement, is it, that it's a wish list? I, I look at our uh, nuclear capabilities, our triad, our modernization program as the min minimum essential capabilities that required to defend this nation. Because we have to defend against the most existential threat, and Russia and China and their capabilities are the most existential threat. So to me, that's the most minimum essential capabilities that we have to build, and even at the highest rate, it'll still be just roughly 6% of the overall defense budget. I think we can afford that security. <coughs> And do you uh, fully support the nuclear posture review as it was put forward by the department? I do, ma'am. And do you truly believe it is needed that we, um, that we continue on a path forward to reach the goals of that nuclear posture review? I think it's essential. And if I could comment on the nuclear posture review, it's, I think it's very interesting to look at our approach defined in the nuclear posture review and our adversary's approach. Uh, the elements in the nuclear posture review that we have, uh, we have put forth all stay within our treaty responsibilities. We don't, we don't recommend uh, developing new uh, nuclear-powered torpedoes, new nuclear-powered cruise missiles. We don't uh, look at anything. We believe that we can secure this nation through the modernization of the triad and the addition of a couple of small elements to, add, uh, to respond to specific threats. And in, in that case, it's the uh, low-yield nuclear weapon and the submarine-launched cruise missile. But that's a very measured response to what our adversaries are doing. I appreciated your very clear and concise explanation of the importance and, and really the mission of each leg of the triad. And I'm, I'm very pleased uh, that you made that clear and concise for the record today. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask you a little bit about the New START Treaty. In your opening statement, you note that Russia is also developing and intends to deploy novel strategic nuclear weapons like its nuclear-armed, nuclear-powered, underwater, unmanned vehicle and intercontinental range cruise missile, which Russia seeks to keep outside of existing arms control agreements. Do you believe that these new systems, if they're deployed, should be counted under a New START treaty limitation? So the way the New START treaty is defined is that there's uh, the New START Treaty only covers existing weapons when it was uh, put in place in 2011. That means it covers the ballistic missiles, both submarine and, and ground-launched. It covers the bombers and the cruise missiles on the bombers and the platforms that carry them. Uh, there's also a clause in the treaty that says if somebody, uh, if, a, if one of the parties of the treaty sees the development of new strategic arms, they can come to the bilateral consultative uh, commission and bring those things forward. I have not seen that happen but we see them developing capabilities outside of that treaty, which is concerning to me. Do you believe a decision to extend the treaty should be made on its national security merits and Russia's behavior figures uh, heavily into that evaluation with just the example that I gave you, that we need to be looking at these, these not just to renew a treaty? I do, ma'am. I want, I want Russia in every treaty. I want Russia in the INF treaty. I want Russia in the New START treaty. I support those treaties. But they have to be parties to those treaties. It takes two to participate in the treaty, at least. 
And Russia has not been a party to the INF Treaty, is that correct? Russia has violated the INF Treaty for five years now, and, and despite our best efforts, we have not been able to bring them in compliance. I've talked about that to the President. I've talked about New START to the President. Uh, we all want Russia in that treaty. We want them to participate. But if they won't, we're tying our own hands to deal with the adversaries in the world, including China, it who is not help. part of that treaty. It doesn't help when your partner in a treaty is uh, not in compliance and we remain in compliance. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you.